Okay, good morning, Your Excellencies, uh, Highness, uh, all dignitaries, uh, conference delegates. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity, the invitation from the alliances, from ATSIC. We highly appreciate that. I'd just like to start by adding two comments to what has been said earlier by Her Excellency uh, Sheikh Lubna. Uh, United Arab Emirates, the latest also report about the Digital Opportunity Index, which is also to add to the readiness, is now the fairest country on the top in the Gulf states, in the Digital Opportunity Index. Furthermore, the project which we will talk about later, the knowledge management, uh, government of Abu Dhabi is the fairest Arab country to establish this knowledge management framework, which I will talk about it later. But getting into the topic, uh, I was, uh, this one. I was last week, I think I have to move this quickly because I've been warned now. I was, two weeks ago I was in San Lucia and I, we were in a big conference for sustainable development and I remember we met the Prime Minister, Stevenson King, his honorable, and he told us, he said mobile phone, he said he heard so lots about how mobile phones save lives, but he said he had seen that by himself. When the Hurricane Thomas struck St. Lucia, if you all remember, on the 7th of October, yet they lost people, they lost life, 14 people lost their life, but they said mobile phones saved other 14 thousands of lives, because he said they were able to send messages at least two hours before the hurricane to people where what is going to happen and where they're going to escape. So in his opinion, that's the first time he has seen all this concept about ICT can, and save lives in real terms. And this is a good example. Now, talking about ICT, why they didn't do what we hoped they have done, all academics, I myself am academics at the University of Sussex, but I'm also involved in sustainable development plus knowledge management. One of the problems I want to highlight here quickly, most of the research has been done so far, unfortunately, we, even ourselves in the United Nations, World Bank, IMF, we do have shortage of data. So when we talk about Africa, that lady actually saved most of my time on my discussion. We don't even have accurate and complete data. This is acknowledged by even the United Nations itself, World Bank, and so on. Uh, UNESCO itself, I'm also involved in the UNESCO chair in technology transfer. The other issue I want to highlight here, sorry, I, this is, sorry, I have to... Now, people are still not quite sure. I know this is very simple to say, but some people say we have been industrialized revolution, we went to information, and we are in the globalization era now. There is lots of discussion about this, but that lady actually said a very interesting story, which is exactly what I wanted to say. Always remember this cycle of revolution, we didn't go through it as all equal is the same. So if you compare the UK, you cannot compare to Nigeria, you cannot compare to India or Malaysia or San Lucia or the United States. This cycle is not, we haven't been through this cycle all the same. Africa has not moved in industrialization by only more than 2%. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. The whole African continent only achieved 2% in the last many, many years in terms of industrialization. So you have to remember that. This is just a quick quote from across the world. Canadian government, they fully understand and they appreciate the importance of ICT, and they believe this could be the solution in any future or any strategy in the future. But again, we do face in our own developed countries. This is just examples from an ICT for development project by the UN. This is quoted by famous work in Manchester. You can see we're still in Sweden, in big countries, in like the United Kingdom. You can see this quote. Central government in the United, uh, United Kingdom contains 2,000 euros. This is from the government statistics. So before we talk about Africa, we better get our things right in the developed countries. So we really have a, 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 a reality check. Give you an example of another quote from the Compute in 2002 from the United Kingdom. We have our UK police national statistic need updating 65%. Hawaii, this is all quote from the UN for ICT for development re, uh, reports. I want to move quickly. We have been told long time ago, I think our 11 years, we will come to a situation where we will be divided. And this is a famous quote from UNESCO. Most of you, they know this man. And he told us, the way we advance ICT and knowledge, we are, we are dividing ourselves. And he told us there, what is the solution? He said, we need to return to the principle of international cooperation, become alliance, friends. That's what we have been told. 
And he said, you can see the last quote, absolute necessary for developing countries and should be the subject of international solidarity. We need to be solid together. So that message was given to us 11 years ago. But did we listen? I don't know. There's so many reports of been access from the UN Knowledge Society and so many of them over the last 10 or 15 years. One thing also I realize people don't realize, countries are different. Some countries are having, the, the way we are slow in our progress or fast, we are very different. I'm just quoting one example here, and this is a very well-known distinguished economist, if you can see. Taiwan moved at the 1962 was the same, they had the same GDP like the poor African countries. They moved so fast, not because of ICT, but not only because of ICT, from many other things. There is many stories you can learn from across the countries or across the world. One thing I think, sorry to use the word bothering many international scholars, we are actually in the same cycle. We started by the Sustainable Development famous report, we recycling it in a new declaration of the Millennium Development Goal. Then we recycling about the World Bank imperatives and so on and so on. Then in 2000, if you remember Kofi Annan, he said, let's focus on key issues like energy, water, the Wehab initiative. So we're kind of moving around ourselves. The other thing is, I am pleased when we saw that Jeffrey Sachs early. Jeffrey said education is important things. And I want to, to highlight this here, to achieve sustainable development, ICT cannot just in itself solve the problem of sustainability. There are so many other issues you need to take into account. Technology, population, communities, and so on and so on. And I would like to highlight this one. This is just a difference between these two economies. Cover base is six years. Uh, Sometimes they said Africa is a hopeless continent. Hopeless. Don't even, even waste time on them. But then, because of war, they're killing each other. But then six or seven years ago, we have another hopeless problem in Africa, digital divide. So you can just take, because the focus of the conference here, which I'm pleased, is more of Africa. So this is an example. In the same times, we have our graduates in the United Kingdom now are seeking jobs in India. While you have a continent suffering from IC, not developing well, you have, this is, you need to understand, most of ICT publishing, e-publishing things are now undertaken in India. Oxford University Press, Cambridge, all of us, we do typesetting and all these kind of e-services, e-books in India. And even this is a quote from the Silicon Valley, our own UK graduates are actually going to India to find jobs. So you have to understand the bigger picture. Quickly, quote from the UN report, new ICT products and applications are frequently designed in ignorance of developing countries. And I don't need to talk too much because the lady there, she already said that. So we, we must better listen to her. Realities and fail to address the needs of the most disadvantaged section of the community. What she told us, she said, we don't understand what you're talking about. This is another quote also very famous from Cambridge. You can see this is, this is what we do in the developed countries. We need to be, to have a reality check for ourselves. Finally, from a United Nations Development uh, 1999, global markets, I'm also pleased Professor Shimon said about that. So we need to consider all these things quickly of the time. Give you example, an African university, this is a report by the African universities uh, in 2005, the broadband, the bandits they enjoy is like 50% what an individual in the UK or in Sweden enjoys, and they pay double the price. You can only know this if you go and see it yourself, am I right? When you go to Sudan or Nigeria or South Africa or you go to some poor countries, you will see how it takes just to, to open a PDF file. I'll give you another example. This is from our own uh, country, the United Kingdom. Uh, this is a parliamentary report. It was a widely consult consulted project. And they said digital only environment will exclude over 50% of the scientists globally to scientific research. So the more we advance in the West, the more we're cutting people. And that was a report submitted to Prime Minister uh, Tony Blair at the time. The gulf in the science and technology is, in is getting wider. And the dangerous consequence of this is that we will reach a point where we have to give them information aid. This is a quote from a respected African colleague, I think, and he said one thing that bothered me. He said this to a UK, Canadian, African uh, workshop like this was in the UK and Canada. And he said what bothered me that we talk about the question of ICT and science and technology broadly than we did. We talk about ICT and science and technology as if they themselves can solve the problem. 
And finally, another quote, which is a famous quote from a distinguished developing country expert. He said, what we're doing is like, I come to your house, say to you, you don't need salt, you need sugar. So we really need to have a, call, uh, a check on what we're doing here. Another final thing, we, unfortunately, the academics in the development, I myself, part of them, we contributed to this uh, dilemma. When we talk about the affairs of developing countries, we dictate the, the affairs for them. I'm giving you famous international journals. The left one is called African Affairs, published by Oxford University. If you go through the editorial board, there is no African. They're all British and American. If you go to the one on the right hand, it's called uh, Asian Affairs. The entire editorial board is British and American. If you go in the middle, the British Journal of Politics and International Relations, the entire editorial board is British. So when it comes to British affairs, we take care of it. When it comes to African and Asian affairs, we take care of it. That's where the problem, I think. I will finish with a famous quote. Uh, Jeff, uh, uh, well, he used to be the UN chairman for science and technology for development. He said, we need new censuses. And that's what I'm glad to this opportunity. And I will quote you Jeffrey Sachs. I didn't know uh, I would be using, but you can see Jeffrey Sachs, we need to work together. We need to come together. I think that's the message we should all really do. We need to start to think of how we can come together. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for, I hope I didn't take my time. Thank you very much.